I like sleep. I like to sleep. I sleep very well. I can sleep standing up. So anything interrupting my sleep would be a problem. Mm -hmm. There is a film that is out that... <laughs> Let me read this, this thing for you here. Terrifying Nightmares. Ooh, don't like that. A Broken Family. A Mysterious Holistic Doctor. They haunt Mary as she searches for the strength to find forgiveness amongst the dark betrayals. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a reading. Thank you. All for you. It's crazy. I'm like, when I read that and I watched the trailer, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, we don't like being messed with our sleep. And this is based on Charles Dickens. So he did. So I'm going to ask uh, my guest about that also. From Wild Seven Films, Look Mom Media, and the Vineyard produ Productions, this movie is called Dying to Sleep. It's a psychological thriller. And when I was on IMDb, it is 9.3 out of 10. It's basically perfect. And the person here with me, I've known for a gajillion years. Um, and he is one of the, he's the co-writer, director, executive producer. And he found some time to actually even act in the film too, folks. It's just movie stars, Eric Roberts, Dave, Sher Dave Sheridan, Victoria Baudicera, and my guests and others. Help me welcome Paris Dillon. Hello, Paris. Wow, what an intro. He's the best, folks. <laughs> yeah. he, he is the best in the biz. You can't get better than that. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm really uh humbled and feel great that you want to talk about the movie and you're an awesome person to talk to about it. I actually have to mention side side note is that I didn't realize you're part of the bay. And I ah. I know all those Greg, I know everybody. That's my those are my people. And I was like, oh, I'm yeah. part of the producers over there too. So well, congratulations to that successful series also. Ten years Thanks. counting. Thank you. Yeah, Gregory Martin. He's the he's the man. Um, that team is such a wow, a force to be reckoned with. They just they are all the actors. I mean, they put so much work into it. Um, it's it's really great to be a part of something like that. So that must also inspire you to do projects like this, right? On some level, it keeps you kind of keeps up your ups your game. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, you know, working on other projects, seeing how others do it. Um, I kind of always take a little bit of knowledge that I could use for myself um, and try to do my own spin on it. But I'm always learning, always growing, always like picking up new things because there's just an infinite amount of knowledge and things to know in this dang film industry. And there's no one right way. Like everyone, like, so I just try it all, throw stuff against a wall, see what sticks. And yeah, being on the Bay and watching how they've been doing it for so long, it's, it really did. It, it, uh, you know, gave me some clues on how I'd like to run my sets. Mm. Okay. Very good. Well, yeah, well, well, well let's, well, let's, let's get into Dynasty because I mean, I've, I've known some other projects and over the years and maybe before, but this one, literally you are a triple quadruple septuple threat in this. I, don't, I mean, I don't, I don't do math really well, but you're involved in all things. So before we even get into actual film, are you an organized person? Uh, yeah, I would say people would, would think I'm, I'm organized. Maybe like an organized, like chaotic organization skills. The chaos is organized. But yeah, yeah, I, I, that's kind of my, how my brain works. I'm pretty uh, able to put things in boxes and check things off lists. And that that's kind of like just how my mind works. It's hard for me to move on to something else unless this is checked off. And I ask that because you have, you wear so many different hats. Uh, in general, how do you, how do you balance that? Because you're actually, you are acting not in all, you're not in every single frame, thank God, but you're, you are in enough scenes. I mean, that you are also acting and you're directing. You also wrote the thing. You're also producing it, which people, when you're producing, we're talking budgets, yeah. catering, yeah. actors, uh, transportation. You're thinking, I mean, you have to think about all these things. So how do you balance kind of, how do you find a balance? You said kind of chaotic, I'm sure. That's a movie making is always a kind of chaotic. I mean, it always is, just is. It, it always comes together. 
But like, how do you navigate that? Sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes it does. I mean, movies get made. Yeah. Movies get made all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's a wonder. It. It's a wonder that any of them get made. That's to be true. honest. Well, honestly, true. even the big ones, I'm like, even those filmmakers are like, I didn't think we were gonna even get to the finish line. So, in movies in general, to get to the finish line is very difficult. Um, uh, in regards to wearing a lot of hats, um, it depends on the project, really. A lot of times I've been director and actor, and that seems to work really well. I've got an idea of, of kind of, you know, how to direct myself while keeping a bigger picture in mind of whatever the project is. But when you start to add producing into it is when you start to stretch yourself a little too thin. So the key is really having great people around you. Um the parts where uh, the writing, the producing, the directing, and the acting really are at odds with each other is in the editing process. Oh. Because I'll be going through scenes, and as a writer, I'm like, no, that that line, I wrote that line. And then as an actor, I'm like, yeah, but this way I did this scene, that's better for my performance. As a director, I'm like, well, guys, stop talking because this has nothing to do with the full picture. And the producer side is me, hurry the F up, none of this matters. You're cutting it. It's too long anyway. You're cutting it. So that's kind of where wearing multiple hats can can be at odds, as I found in post. Um, as that, and that is the best description I have. I've interviewed thousands of people who do multi, and that's the best description. Love it. Okay, good, good. I appreciate that. Yeah, I've been doing it. Kind of. Uh, I try not to do it. Let me just make that clear. I try not to wear all it. And in regards to dying to sleep, it really happened because uh, Sarah Lydia and I knew we wanted to do something as actors. And the script happened with a friend that uh, Patch that um, created this with us. And we started getting this movie together. I was playing her brother, which the role I am. And we started interviewing directors and talking to other people and seeing what others would bring. And it was really my cinematographer, Manib, who gave me kind of confidence and courage to really do this. He said, we were walking away from some meeting in Burbank with directors and we liked them, but he was like, bro, you need to direct this movie. You know this in and out. You know how to do this. You've directed before, maybe not a feature, but you've directed a whole bunch of other things before. Like this is the way to do it and he believed in me and it really gave me the confidence and then the producer part of me is like oh we'll save money because i don't need to hire another actor um because the, as we're scheduling this movie he you know he pops in random scenes my character um so i was already going to be there directing the film so i didn't have to add another more days for some actor and we shot on location so we have to you know, pay for their room and board and three meals a day. And like, it adds up. So as a producer, it made sense just just to do it. Um, but but when we were about to start shooting, we realized we we're like, wait, Paris, you're kind of in this a lot. I was like, I know. I didn't realize the brother was in so many scenes, um, but he's in most of the first half. So it, it, uh, it, it worked out where I was able to just slip in here and there throughout the schedule. Okay, so you said you were inspired, by, the story's inspired by Dick Charles Dickens. Tell us yeah. why, what story was it? Well, a few things. Um, the The real answer is, I'll just give you the real stuff. You know? <laughs> give me the real that's, answer. I think I want a real answer. Sure, I'll take a real answer. That's yeah. you. I could give you this, you know, you know very flowerly, <laughs> you know, reasons. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you straight because you deserve it. Thank you. Because you're you get the pulse on Hollywood. <laughs> yes. Right. Is it? Yes. The pulse. Uh, honestly, it was because I knew this was going to be an indie small film and we didn't have enough money for like big, big time A-listers uh, for too much. And we didn't have a expensive IP, intellectual property. So I looked at public domain works. And I said, hey, if we can attach some kind of recognizable work of art or name that I can slap on the poster, maybe that will get us some, uh, some audience members and some eyeballs. So Sarah Liddy and I scoured the internet, 
for public domain uh, works. And we sent back and forth short stories. I finally found this interesting Charles Dickens short story called uh, The Signalman. It's a mystery. And there was enough in there that excited us both that we were like, okay, we can take something from this. And it really inspired the story. And we just made it a little bit more of a modern twist. I like that. Yes, folks, folks, Poe Domain is great. I have two audio dramas based on Poe Domain characters that I wrote. So I know, I know it's going to be fun. You can find something. There's stuff there's like this juicy stuff in there. I love it. Yeah, you get it. You get and it. And you can use it. <laughs> you can use it. It doesn't cost anything. You can use it. Um, okay, so that's, that's very cool. So I just read, you know, like a, like a, a through line of this. How would you describe the plot of the movie? I just, I, I did the intro. The intro, I described how you guys wrote it. But how would you describe the film? Well, I wrote that. So that's how I describe exactly. it. <laughs> I wrote that log. I, we wrote many different versions about, you know, a young woman getting over nightmares, um, seeing her uh, regular family doctor that just wants to pump her full of meds. Yeah. It, which is in fact Eric Roberts, who might be on here in five minutes. Yeah, which of course, um, which of course, is good commentary on life and how life is sometimes today. It and and that that part that um speaks to a few different themes of the movie, and one of them is old versus new medicine. There you go. Yes. So she's taking these medications from Eric Roberts, um, Doctor Palmer, Palmer, and Palmer. they're not they're not working. Yeah. And uh, so she goes with a more holistic approach. But that doctor, there's some uh, there's a mystery around him that has to do with why she's having the nightmares. And it all kind of interweaves. And it's a cool full circle thing, at least I think. Um, do, you, do you have do you personally have any experience with holistic doctors and holistic, holistic medicine? That's a good question. Um you know, I I think I mean I've been to there's a couple shamans okay. I've been to. Okay. Um, I've also there was some reality show I did years ago, and they took us to this seance kind of. Oh my god! I think I remember that. Oh my god! I think yes, I think I saw that. Um, that was kind of like a little bit, you know, talking about herbs and and using uh, nature to heal. Um, so a little, a little dabble, but no, I, I, I had to research a lot. I had to dig in and research what, like, um, would, what natural herbs and plants would he actually prescribe or use to help her healing? Yes. I mean, you know, you chose a theme of sleep. You know, I was kind of making a little joke. I do love to sleep. I like sleep. You know, we have Nightmare on Elm Street, that whole series and other series that have touched on sleep. Why was that attractive for you in terms of story? Why is that well, again, Doctor uh, the Charles Dickens um, story was part of that. Um, it attracted you somehow. That story also attracted you, like yeah, that's true. It did attract me because um, we knew we wanted to do some kind of thriller, and the idea of sleep leaves a lot of options as far as cinematically. Mm -hmm. True. Because a lot has to do with your mind. And there is this, you know, that's the thriller part of it. Is her mind playing tricks on her? Um, is this real? But a along with that, if there was this theme of like forgiveness, and that's really what the movie is about. So it kind of has this sensational, exciting, thriller-esque uh, overlay under the like the meaning and the theme of forgiveness. I feel like, I mean, you, you, you have to watch the movie, folks. Of course, that's why we're here. I feel like there's some big twist or something in there somewhere. Is that what you feel? You feel I, that? I'm watching the trailer, I was like, I just feel like there's some twist that's going to be either just messed up or I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But it got me excited well, to want to see the film so I can go, okay, let's see what, I mean. But I feel like, I mean, you can't give it away, of course. You know, I don't want you give away the ending or anything. But I just have, I, I, I just feel like there's something going on in there. Well, guess what? I got good news for you, James. It's out right now. You can watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to go watch it. You can watch it right now. Okay, bye. See you guys later. See you. I'll see you next time. No. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> we got E-Rob in one minute. He's coming in. Um, I want to find out how you got him and all that. So I won't wait until you get to talk about that, of course. Um, but for you, casting this must have been very interesting, too, because I'm sure you're part of the casting process. You had to make sure you had a lead. We carry this kind of story. 
yeah. uh, and all the supporting cast. So how was the casting of this project? We had um, a casting director, Kat Mobasser, that we brought on. She was great. And she found a lot of um, the supporting cast. I also have been in the industry 12 years. So I had, and if you throw a rock in Hollywood, you'll hit an actor. Oh, like yeah. Actor. So I was able to pull some people that I knew that I knew would fit the roles. And casting, we took a, took a while. We had a lot of submissions. Um, we looked at a lot of different parts. We were close on some people. Um, we were, it was between like one or two or three and we kept going back and forth. So there was a lot of talented um, people we saw and I'm really happy with the cast that we got. We're get, that's one of the main things that uh, we get feedback on constantly is our cast. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm really happy about that. Well, because because casting is very important in this situation, and we have someone joining us, I believe, coming in right yes. now. And let's see if it, you know, I love I love Zoom. Come on, folks, we can do this. I love it. And I believe he's coming in right now. So There's I'm Bert, but I changed the name, of course. Make it Eric Roberts. Hi guys. Hi, Hi Eric, guys. How are you? I could not be better. Thanks for asking. You have the greatest hair. I'm sorry. You have the greatest hair. Always. I had nothing to do with it, but thank you. <laughs> I never appreciated my hair until I was 50, and I got up and realized everybody had hair recession except for me and Chris Walken. <laughs> so, That's uh, right. <laughs> yeah. So, Eric, I, I got something. Yeah. I, like, Paris doesn't know this. I'm James. I, I got to tell you something really quick. So, years ago, I bumped into you literally – Behind the scenes of Dancing with the Stars. And I said, I was, I was, I was I'm so sorry about blind. We were talking. And you said I had a very nice voice. And you were very nice to me. And I said, You have a very nice voice. Like, I'm like, you're talking about my voice. And we chuckled for a minute. And then they, I wanted to say something else to you. And then they ushered me away. But I'm sorry. You, you were very nice. And I never forgot that. So I just want to tell you that, Eric. Well, I was also correct. You have a a very nice voice. <laughs> well, okay, well, thank you. I, I, like I said, again, I was like, Eric Roberts just talked to me. Uh, so thank you, thank uh, you very much. Um, so anyway, so you're, you, know, you play you play Dr. Ted Palmer. How would you describe your character? Yeah. How would you describe your character? Well, he, he's, uh, he's, he's not what he appears to be. And uh, that's what I would like to leave it as, so you can watch it for yourself and enjoy what I do. As opposed to me taking it apart before we get to see it. But <laughs> I, I, I I'm not what I'm here to be. I like that. And so and so how did you get involved with this project? How did how did Paris and, and company find you? Paris, Paris sent me the script. I liked it and uh ha had my people respond to him. And um Paris, let's talk about Paris. Let's talk about Paris. Let's talk about him. Yes. Yeah, Paris is a bit of a little miracle. And I think I think I think Paris is old enough to drive, but in Paris is <laughs> <pretty> young. <laughs> He's a baby. A baby, Eric. He's a baby. Yeah, I know. That's the point. But 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 he's a good leader, dude. He was he he's a good director. And um and he's a good actor too. Look at his stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 always a drag when the writer wants to star in his own material and he's bad. That that's 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 hard, but it happens. Yeah, we Something. know it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? So what so how why was Paris a great director for you and your performance? Well, you know, Paris uh leaves well enough alone, or he says no when he should. There's a you know, he 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 understands that's that's the strength of a leader. That you don't always have to say something, <laughs> and uh, and uh, he's also he's also a kid, so he has that 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 the blatant honesty in spite of all he can do, mm -hmm. which is which is a which is a breath of fresh air uh, in Hollywood, <laughs> <laughs> even on the set. I appreciate that, buddy. Yes, Eric. No, seriously. I, I'm in my 50s, and I, I appreciate the younger set these days. They, they keep it fresh for us. It was for us. Yeah. They do. Yeah. So, Paris, what was it like directing Eric Roberts? I mean, like, the Eric Roberts. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, luckily, I'd known Eric for years, so I know his his uh, 
his fun a- atmosphere he brings on set. Um, and honestly, he's a he's the best pro you can work with. You just trust him. He's got great instincts, but also he's very inventive. So he'll he'll take a line and make not only make it his own, but do something that you didn't even think of. Um, and you do that a couple of times and you, he, he's so fast. You just trust him. It's, it's awesome to work with someone like, like Eric, who's been doing it for so long that just kind of knows how to, how to find the groove, find the beats. And it's awesome as a director because, you know, you get to just kind of let him do his thing a little bit. And then, you know, I can tweak him here and there and he's like, sure boss, that's it. And we're on to the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and for you, Eric, it must just be, like you said, it's a breath of fresh air to have somebody come in and go, okay, Eric, I trust you. You know what you're doing. But I'm all, but are you also like, I'm here to do what you need, right? I'm here to deliver what you need, right? No, as an actor, as an employee of a project, I only have one, one question ever for my boss, my boss being my director. I walk on a set, hi, how you doing? We have a little coffee, blah, 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 here's what we're doing. And I say to my boss, okay, what do you want to see? And I let him tell me, and then I go execute. That's that's my job. They tell me what to say. They tell me what to wear. They tell me where to stand, and they tell me how to do it. And I follow instructions. I just happen to follow instructions pretty well. So that's that's my job. And uh, he understands that, especially for a kid. He 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 knows when. You know, like I said, it's important. He he uh, he knows when not to talk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. in, your, in, in your long, illustrious career, I mean, do you think that's one of the reasons why you have survived this long? Because you do your job. You're like, I come in and I do my job. I am a tool and I love being a tool. That sounds uh, <laughs> fantastic. I'm not trying to be fantastic. Yeah, I, I know. That's what you mean. I love yeah. being an instrument. And yes. uh, and that's what, I, that's what I am. And I take great pride in it because I know how to do what anybody wants me to do. And, and, I, and I take great pride in... Okay, what do you want to see? And they tell me, and I go, watch this. And I go, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you must get a lot of scripts, though. So how do you choose your roles these days? Well, I've got I've got several positive scripts on my desk. Some are, are um, Eric will love this, Eric will not avoid this kind of thing, but all kinds of different headings. I have two readers. Uh, they read, one reads your comedies, one reads dramas. And when they, and when they like them, they do a synopsis and if i like the synopsis i read the script if i like the script i tell my wife hyphen manager to make the deal and and uh so that's that's how i do it and it's kind of a factory and uh if i'm not on a set i'm at my desk deciding i like that that's very cool it's like a factory it's like it's good I love my life. I really do. It, and my 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 wife has set it up like this, where it works. And uh, and I I, in fact, she's at a tower right now making a movie, and I'm home alone. And uh, and I just love the fact that I had this life. That's my desk. My but we we have lots of animals, so I have chores. But but you know, it's it's a great life. My my wife has given me as the actor at home alone with his work. And uh, I just love my life. So it's so it's the woman beside the man. I believe that uh, in, this, in this case. No, m- my my wife is my hero. My wife is my leader. She's not beside me. I have my hand on her shoulder, following her to uh, to go all the right places. Now she's she's the boss, dude. It's great that way. <laughs> I need a boss. Believe me. <laughs> so have you ever played a, a doctor before? I can't remember if you have or not. Have you? I've played many doctors. The most famous doctor, oddly enough, is a five-part series of movies called Stalked by My Doctor series for the Lifetime series. And I play a guy who likes young girls. The uh, the uh, the first of the five is a study in that kind of personality. Yeah. It's legitimate. All the others are kind of slasher films. But but the uh, the first one I recommend, Stalked by My Doctor. Yes, I've played a lot of doctors. Yeah, right. lots. <laughs> so for like for this role for dying to sleep was there anything you had to prepare for for this one to play the role no no i just i just uh no not at all yeah he put the he put the the, the code on you and you're like i'm ready right yeah you're like, how you do it i have my md let's let's shoot yeah. <laughs> <I'm> my <AMD. laughs> so i mean yeah. so paris i mean 
So what was the set like with him on it? Like, what is it? What is it like when he's when he's on? Is it just like? Laughing? Well, we were in we were in uh, beautiful Solvang, so we were outside of LA. I love Solvang, I love Solvang. And when you're when you're outside of LA, you know, you get um, real town folk, you get real fans. You now get I describe Solvang for them because it oh yes has, has a special quality. That's yes, Sol- Solvang is a pretty little valley town that is in the heart of wine country. They shot the movie Sideways there back in uh, early 2000s. And it's picturesque. It, everywhere you look, everywhere I pointed my camera, uh, gold. So we were in such, I think that's why Eric said, fine, I'll, co- I'll come up. <laughs> I'll- <laughs> <drag me." laughs> it's like Solvang, sure. I mean, I can do work. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. No, it has a little Dutch land. It has yeah. a little Dutch land to it. It's uh, it's just so so. It's like it's like fake. Only it's not yeah. fake. You know, right. people live there, and it, it's just yeah. cool. I just dig. I went exactly. there um, for my birthday earlier this year, and I remember asking some people who worked there, I go, "Do you live actually live here too?" Like like Eric said, I'm like, <laughs> "Live here?" And go, "Oh yeah, I live here." Exactly. It's exactly. so weird. I have an apartment over there. I go, "There's apartments here." I, I was totally like shocked. I thought it was just like this little amusement park town. Yeah. But it's before we run out of time, I yes. want to give I want to give Paris a little credit for for the for the subject matter of the film that oh, he's please. making. That that you know, that, uh, he told me personally that uh, Prozac Nation was something that he thought was uncool, and hence this movie. And uh, uh, you want to you want to talk about that a little bit, buddy? Yeah, please. yeah, yeah, exactly right. That. That's the old versus new medicine debate. And Eric's character was something that we talked about where this doctor, it's not like he was evil. He, he just didn't know any better. He just, Eric's, Eric's character, Dr. Palmer, just thought the only solution is more pills. The only solution to get this woman to stop having nightmares is meds, is just giving her meds. Um, so that's kind of the character that I wanted to portray so that we can show the contrast when she goes to a more holistic approach and that helps her out a little bit more. But I like the fact that you're saying it's like, he's not an evil guy. It's like, he's just, right. he's just he was taught this happens. You give medication. That's a good commentary on the biz, on the biz. Right. But he's not what he appears to be in that he right. comes across like he's the good doctor who knows right. the good he come with me. And yes. he's guessing, and he's not doing a good job, and it's not cool. And uh, that that is that is a lot of problem medicine these days. Hence, hence our movie. I was going to yeah. say, there's a commentary on good versus bad doctors. There are there there are doctors who are not good, but they're not bad people necessarily. So we can't right. group them like that. Even though we all kind of feel that way after the fact when we're pointing fingers. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Sorry, Paris, you going to say? Yeah, no, I agree with that. It's like the, the thing is, you know what you know, right? If you don't do anything outside of learning, if you don't gain any more education outside of what you know, then you just you act on what you know. And that's that's life period, right? It's like you don't do anything else, that's it. Uh, but that's what, but see, that's more interesting to play for you, Eric. You to play somebody who's a little multi layered, and the audience can go, "Well, he's this way." No, he's this way. No, he's this way. Right? That's, that's kind of a fun part. Well, I love my. I like my audiences to uh, feel bad that I'm a bad guy. He's <laughs> <laughs> doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Dying to Sleep is out. So, Paris, tell them where they can actually see this beautiful, wonderful, scary, mysterious film. We're out on Amazon Prime right now and also Voodoo. And uh, the reviews are starting to trickle in. People are watching it. Please take a look. Like I said, on IMDb, 9.3 out of 10. That's basically a perfect film, basically. I mean, are I, you I mean, serious? We got a nine. Seriously. We got a ten. Almost. I'll I saw it. I saw it today. I was like, "Wow!" It's it's finding an audience. You know, it's the spe- it's a specific film for a type of uh, person that likes a little bit more of a character drama on top of a thriller. It's not just sensationalism, scary thriller, boom, boom, boom. It's getting marketed a little bit um, incorrectly as a horror sometimes. Those uh, audiences uh, aren't liking it. Because it's not a horror. Um, this is this is an actual you know character piece with some thriller um, glue that sticks it all together. So it's got the well both said, elements. Boss. Well said, boss. Nice. 
yeah. No, 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 the reviews are in. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. <laughs> well, thank you, Paris. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, for being on my show here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dying to sleep. It's out now. I'm James Lodge Jr. here for Extra Connections on JLJ Media, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you.